مرحبا everybody and welcome back to my channel if you are new here I'm Maha your favorite Arabic teacher out there on YouTube and, <laughs> and everywhere else Today I'm going to teach you a very very important lesson for your speaking skills. I'm going to list to you the 20 most used words or phrases by Palestinians. If you're ready, let's go. First word of the 20 words list is tfaddal. Tfaddal means please, please come in or please take. So I'm handing you something, tfaddal the plate of hummus. And if you're at my house, at my door, tfaddal, tfaddal food. So we use this tfaddal and it's an imperative verb tfaddal for you male, tfaddali for you female and tfaddalu for all of you. Palestinians and Arabs in general are famous of uh, welcoming people. So tfaddal is a very very used word every day if you are at, at your house, at your village, at your, in your city and somebody comes tfaddal. If you want to give something to somebody, tfaddal. So it means please come in or please take. Yeah? Tfaddal, tfaddali. Tfaddalu to my lesson of Arabic. Tfaddalu. Second word is very similar to tfaddal. It's ahla wa sahla. Of course, it's like your welcome. Ahla wa sahla comes from the standard Arabic word ahlan wa sahlan. Welcome. Hi and welcome. Ahlan wa sahlan in Palestinian dialect becomes a little bit simpler. We remove the an at the ending and it becomes ahla wa sahla. Ahla wa sahla fiko. Third word is the word mnih. Mnih describes how you are feeling. If somebody tells you kif halak, how are you? We always say mnih. Mnih for male, mniha for female, and mnah, we always add in at the ending for the plurals, but it doesn't matter. We will learn new expressions. Dialect speaking, it's not the same as MSA, the rules are not the same. That's why I, I dedicate these lessons for the colloquial and spoken approach of the language. So if you're interested in learning the dialect or how we speak or to understand the words that we say in a daily basis, this is top 20. So number three is منيح. كيف حالك? How are you today? أنا منيح. Number four is طيب. طيب. Sometimes we speak very, very quickly and we abbreviate this طيب into طب. طب خلص ها طيب طيب means okay and it's something that we put almost everywhere طيب باي طيب يلا باي it's like يلا <laughs> يلا is also very very famous but I'm not going to list it because it's banal and obvious that it's very famous but among all Arabs طيب is our equivalent of يلا in the Palestinian dialect طيب do you want to eat uh, some falafel بدك توك لفلافل طيب اه يعني instead of saying yes, you say طيب. طيب is our okay, but again, we don't use it like okay in English. We put it almost everywhere else. So you will hear طيب a lot. طيب? طيب. Number five is inshallah. Inshallah, we use it a lot. And it does not mean literally inshallah. Inshallah, it means if God wills. Yeah, when you say inshallah, abbreviate the whole inshallah, you say inshallah, this is by the way not only Palestinian but it's used again among all Arabs of all different dialects. It literally means if God wills, but we use it to say many many different things. Among those is if God wills, mm? I hope, yeah, are you coming home this uh, summer inshallah, yeah, I hope, I wish, or if God wills, yeah. Rely on God, we rely on God a lot. So inshallah, I will come home. Or sometimes we use this inshallah to avoid an invitation. So if I don't want to accept an invitation and I want to say it politely instead of saying la, la shukran, no thank you, we say inshallah. So we say inshallah in order to say no sometimes. Literally it means if God wills or I hope, I wish but it has this connotation of no in a very respectful way. If you tell your friend, do you want to go out tonight? He can simply answer you in Arabic, inshallah. Inshallah here means no. <laughs> and you need to understand from context, you need to understand from how people say, because people will say inshallah when they are not certain about things. So they say, okay, it's up to God, yeah? If God wills, I will come. But it, what does it mean in general? It means no. So it has two meanings. Inshallah, I will go home this summer. Inshallah, I will see you in a couple of months. Inshallah, I'll become a mom. Inshallah, I'll succeed in the exam. I wish, I hope, if God wills, all these wishes, yeah? But do you want to go out tonight? Inshallah, you understand. Here, inshallah, it means no. Doesn't mean I wish, <laughs> okay? Number six is a unique way to say shukran. We Palestinian people, or in the dialect in general, we like to color our language, so we don't say 
plainly shukran thank you we say allah yakhalik and different many many different ways to say thank you allah yakhalik literally means may god keep you if you're a male we say allah yakhalik if you are a female allah yakhaliki if you are many people allah yakhaliko so if you want to thank somebody for helping you out allah yakhalik Mm? Sometimes we use this Allah yakhalik for a different meaning, yeah? And it depends on the context. I'm trying to give you an idea. We try we sometimes use this Allah yakhalik to ask for a favor. Yani please, like say please, not thank you, not thank you, give me this or help me out. When you are asking or seeking some help of any type, you say Allah yakhalik, open the door. Allah yakhalik, help me with this uh, exam. Allah yakhalik, it's like not begging, not begging, but may God keep you, uh, I will thank you and God will keep you if you do this to me, thing to me. So it's when you seek help, use this Allah yakhalik, yeah? When you want to thank somebody, instead of saying shukran, use Allah yakhalik. If this somebody who did you a favor is a female, say Allah yakhalik. And if you're many people watching my video, I will tell you Allah yakhalik. Thank you for Allah yakhalik for watching my video and Allah yakhalik watch the next ones. Number 7 is one of the most most used uh, Palestinian words out there is the word zalame. <laughs> zalame means man, mm? but we use it in in, in an everyday life. Marhaba ya zalame, kif halak ya zalame, shu akhbarak ya zalame, wainak ya zalame? Ya zalame. Hey man, hey dude. We use it exactly like you use man or dude in english or pal uh, guy yeah but we use it a lot a lot the weird thing why did i include these words because they are so much used and they are the most used 20 words out there but also because they have like double meanings if you are noticing in each word i'm giving you different situations where we will use the same word i explain it literally i give you two meanings so yazalame hey man yeah when i can me. the funny thing about this the yazalame and the extra thing that i'm going to add is weirdly weirdly we palestinian people call our children that are females yazalame this is a weird thing i'm going to dedicate one full video about why do we um, address uh, our beloved ones, especially our children, by the opposite gender. Mm? So I talk to my daughter, I tell her, in kbir, you are big, not kbiri, female big. Or I tell her, ya zalami ta'al. I talk to her, I address her all in the masculine. Hey man, come. <laughs> She's a daughter. She's a seven year old. I'm calling her Zalami, man, and I'm telling her come with the masculine conjugation. All this phenomena happens a lot in the Palestinian dialect, and there's an explanation behind it. Very, very funny explanation. By the way, I'm going to dedicate one full lesson about it. And why do you hear also sometimes songs? But this lesson is going to become too long. Why do you sometimes hear a lot of songs? A man singing, saying Bahibbak to a man, I love you, instead of Bahibbik, I love you, female. Yeah? Not because they're gay, they can be gay, but because we have this tendency of addressing our beloved ones, especially our children, with the opposite gender. Mm? And with this, all, all this concept will be explained in a specific lesson that I promise I will do for you. But let's go back to Yazalami. Yazalami, we hear it a lot, and it means, hey man, but you understand it's like a way for us to express more, more affection and more love. Weird way, but this will be explained to you. Number eight is the word hello. Hello, it means beautiful. Anything that is beautiful, not only aesthetically, we say hello. How was the lesson? Hello. How uh, is Jerusalem? Oh, hello. So for male is hello, for female hello, and plural Halloween. Mm? Sometimes we can tell you hakiatak Halloween. Hakiatak Halloween means your words, the way you speak, your use of language is Halloween. The other meaning of hello that we use a lot in Palestine, it means sweets. You know the dessert, the Palestinian knafe, <laughs> burma, mm, the nablsi knafe, we say halwe. This, all of this, we call it hello. Hello Arabi. Hello means sweets or dessert. Why is sweets, mm, why are sweets called beautiful? Because they are sweet and they are beautiful and they are good and they are nice. Huh? And they are all everything that's good. <laughs> so we say hello, sweet, mm? and hello, beautiful, nice, and good. Okay, hello. Number nine is the word knafe, and knafe has no need to be described or explained. No explanation. Knafe is the most popular hello out there. 
um, you need to come and eat it and test it. Number 10 is a fantastic way to say كتير حلو, very beautiful. So to exaggerate in, 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 in describing the beauty or the goodness or the positiveness of something. Okay, we, we learned hello, nice. But how about very, very nice? Very beautiful, super beautiful. We have a way, very funny way, which is this number, what number is it? Number uh, 10? <laughs> we say bijannin. Mm. Now this is difficult. We say bijannin. This is difficult. I need to explain this to you in one full lesson. But in short, bijannin is a present tense verb. Mm? And it means it makes you majnoon. It comes from majnoon. Majnoon means loco, crazy. And bijannin, it makes you crazy. If something is that beautiful, we say bijannin. This thing makes me crazy. We don't say literally makes me crazy. We say it makes somebody crazy. Yeah, by saying bijannin. And we forget nowadays, we forget about the literal meaning of bijannin that comes from majnoon, crazy. So when I'm describing my sister's dress, she tells me, Kif al fustan, how's the dress? I tell her bijannin. If it's not that beautiful, I tell her, hello. It's okay, it's positive, nice, beautiful, hello, we learned hello before. But if it's so hello, what do you say, hello iktir? Okay, you can say hello iktir, very beautiful. But we have one word to say it's so beautiful, amazing, wonderful, great. Describing what? Again, beauty in, in, or positiveness to the maximum, bijannin. El fustan bijannin. When you say bijannin, you don't need to say bijannin iktir. Hmm? Hello, hello, كتير. But بجنن خلاص. There's nothing more than بجنن. Ah, it درس the lesson بجنن. I ask always all my students, my Palestinian dialect course students, كيف كان الدرس? How was the lesson? And they always tell me بجنن because the درس is masculine. بجنن. So if you're indicating something so beautiful and this thing is masculine, you say بجنن. If this thing that you're describing is so beautiful and it's feminine, you say بجنن. Yeah, بجنن. It is bijannin and it is female bitjannin. How is this lesson up until now? <gasps> bijannin. Number 11 is the word hajiz. Hmm? Hajiz means a blockade, a checkpoint, but it comes from the verb hajaza, to block somebody, yeah? To block something. Of course, in Palestine there are many hajiz and you know why or you maybe you don't know why, but this is one of the most used Palestinian words by Palestinians, uh, the word hajiz, checkpoint or blockade. Um, a place where people are hajaza, are blocked from doing something or from passing from one village to another. Yeah, it comes from the verb hajaza. Hajaz, by the way, it also means to secure, to book something. So I have a hajaz in the restaurant, then I have a booking or a reservation in a restaurant. The word hajaz has a similar, me similar meaning, but Palestinians use it. Um, in order to indicate or convey the meaning of a hajiz between two uh, places, which means a checkpoint in English in general, but literally it means a blockade, uh, a, a place of where people are blocked, hajiz. Number 12 is a bad word, not so bad, that we use when we are angry. When Palestinians are angry, we use uh, animal <laughs> names, hmar, hmar. We have so many hmar on the wheels, behind the wheels, so you might hear the word hmar a lot. You are angry, you're driving, somebody crosses the, your way. Hmar! <laughs> you will hear hmar a lot. It's not that offensive. Hmar, by the way, comes from the standard Arabic word for donkey, which is himar. Hmm? We simplify it, we don't move it. Himar, we say hmar. Hmar. If you're a female and you did something stupid, we say hmara. And if we are many people and we are all stupid in something, we say hamir. So hamar usually it describes how intelligent the person is. And if you're less intelligent, then we use the word donkey, hamar. Um, and therefore it's used by Palestinians when they are angry. So we don't want, we have a lot of curses, bad words. This is not the place <laughs> to teach you the curses, the important ones. This is one of the most used uh, and, and soft 
yeah soft version of curses that we use and we use again the the donkey i think you have in english something similar where you use different animals to describe different people's characteristics you use the i think you use hamar uh, and not you don't say donkey but you say the uh, uh, different synonym of the word so yeah we have something in common we have by the way a lot of animal uh, names used to describe different characteristics of human beings we use it on a daily basis but i'm not gonna list them here again i'm gonna list them in a different lesson today's lesson is about the 20 most used words and one of the most used soft curses and used words by angry palestinians is hamar number 17 is the word طبعاً. طبعاً means of course uh, naturally yeah of course طبعاً. طبعاً. it's very much used of course to say of course <laughs> but we use it a lot there is um, by the way there are people that have this طبعاً with, even if they don't want to say of course they have it like they repeat it i think 100 times uh, a day i once uh, watched an interview for one of my, my 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 favorite Palestinians out there in Palestine, which is a singer from Gaza called Muhammad Asaf. Muhammad Asaf uses the word "tabaan" a lot in one of his interviews. I was saying, "Oh my God, why Muhammad Asaf, a so well educated um, singer, human being, uh, is using tabaan for in, in in context? It's like you, like if you are American, you say you use well a lot." Yeah, well, if you're Spanish, you use entonces. Uh, if you're Italian, you say quindi, insomma. So it's these kind of words that you put everywhere else without thinking uh, about the literal meaning. But again, the literal meaning uh, of tab'an is, um, of course. Do you like Mahas Arabic lessons? Tab'an, of course, there's no doubt. Taban, I love my Arabic lessons. <laughs> Number 18 is very, very much used, and it's the word khalas. Literally, it means enough, that's enough, um, or uh, stop. So if you say it in, a, in like in an order, mm, without changing it, it doesn't become khalasi, khalasu, it's just the word khalas. Um, if it's like an order, khalas, then it means you are asking some people to stop, to stop doing what they're doing, to stop walking, khalas, khalas, to stop speaking, khalas, khalas instead of saying uskut, khalas. One khalas is enough, but when we are in a hurry or we want to make sure you khalas, we say khalas khalas, and we repeat the word khalas khalas. Uh, imagine somebody is maneuvering the car and you want to tell him that's enough or stop. Khalas khalas khalas. Hmm? Somebody is pouring you some qahwe, arabiyye, some coffee. Khalas khalas. That's enough. Bikaffi. Bikaffi literally means it's enough, but we use khalas also to with the second meaning of it. Instead of stop, it means enough. So khalas shukran. Khalas. Somebody is speaking and during my classes, خلاص, shukran, enough, now next. So خلاص has this meaning of stopping people from doing what they are doing, but in a very nice way and polite way, it's not like enough, that's enough. No, خلاص. Hmm? And again, it depends on your intonation. خلاص, يعني خلاص. Enough is enough. By the way, the next word is the word يعني that I just said now. يعني means it means. Hmm? يعني means it means. So when I told you خلاص يعني خلاص, enough is enough. Enough means it's enough. <laughs> يعني has, again, a lot of meanings. Literally, it's a verb and it means it means. It comes from the word معنى, which means a meaning. Mm? Uh, my students can ask me, مها, شو يعني هاي الكلمة بالإنجليزي? مها, what does this word mean in English? Or what is the ma'na, the meaning of this word in English? And they use the word yani. And I will tell them yani an apple. Or yani a car. Ah, shu yani. What does it mean? Shu yani something. Hmm? Yani has a different meaning also that we use a lot in the colloquial Palestinian dialect when um, somebody asks you, How are you feeling? How are you feeling? Kif halak? You can say mneeh, bkhair, mabsoot, tamam, kullo okay. But you can say يعني. Does it mean it means? No. يعني here as an answer of how you're feeling. It means so so. يعني مش كتير منيح. يعني. Mm? So this is another usage of this word يعني. Literally it means it means يعني. But sometimes we also indicate it to in order to say I'm not feeling so good. يعني. Mm? كيف حالك? يعني. The next word is the word حبيبي. We use it non-stop on a daily basis. 
and it means my beloved habibi if you if you are my beloved and you are a female we say habibti if you're many people that i love we say habaybi so habibi habibti habaybi habayib are lovers beloved people and habaybi my beloved inti habib habibi inti habibi habibti so habibi for male habibti for female and habaybi for a lot of people this word habibi we hear it everywhere in Palestine, almost everywhere in the Arab world. Is Habibi used only for sentimental and couple love? No, Habibi is used in almost every situation in, in the daily life in Palestine. Why? Because we can say Habibi to a um, boy in the street, we can say Habibi to a waiter in the restaurant, we can say Habibi to our brothers, to our uh, mothers, to our daughters and sons. Habibi means Habibi. It has, you are dear to me. My, it's like my precious, my dear. So it doesn't literally mean my beloved, my lover. Only when you are talking to your beloved one, you say, ah, inti habibi, habibi, inti habibti. Hmm? Ba into habaybi. I can call you that I don't know you. You are watching my videos. Into habaybi. You are my lovers. All of you are my lovers. No, like I love you. You are my precious ones. You are the people, my students. Into habaybi. You are the people that I care about and I give you these lessons. So you can use it also not to mean love between couples. Okay, this is how if I see a child in the village, in the street, I can call him Ta'al Habibi. Yeah, so you can use it. Um, men use it with other men. Yeah, Habibi, just like Yahi, which is the next word. Uh, or like ya zalami uh, like brother of mine hey dude uh, we use habibi a lot we you hear habibi everywhere in the, in songs in songs they are specific for love between couples in the street in palestine you use it as i told you any kind of relationship or any kind of approach to people a very nice approach usually to younger people you say habibi habibti Mm -hmm. All this lesson is going to go, uh, it's gonna be too long. The last word is when Arab Palestinians are angry. When you are angry, you always say Yil'an. Mm -hmm. Yil'an is an abbreviation of Yil'an al-Dinya. And then we have a lot of things that we can put after Yil'an. What is the meaning of this Yil'an? Yil'an means damn. Damn this thing, yeah? Maledetto this thing. What is the dunya that comes after this Yil'an? Dunya means life. So damn this life. Yani, I don't want to tell you the word the equivalent in English. When you are so fed up, you are tired and you are angry. Yil'an. Yil'an al-dunya. I had an accident. Yil'an al-dunya. I failed the exam. Yil'an al-dunya. I missed the last bus. Yil'an. Ah, so you can say a lot of things that you are um, uh, Cursing. Yil'an means a curse on the dunya, on life. You can add a lot of different words apart from Yil'an... I don't want... <laughs> I don't want... Yil'an abuk, we sometimes say. So, damn your father. Uh, curse be on abuk. We don't say Yil'an immak a lot. We don't touch the mom, uh, the Palestinian mom. We say Yil'an abuk. Yil'an al-dunya is more natural, more يعني, general, yeah? So, don't say Yil'an abuk to you. Yil'an al-dunya. Ah... When you want to say shit, ah, uh, shit, we don't say the literal translation of shit, hmm? like in, in other languages, we say yil'an, which literally means curse be on or upon or damn. Hmm? If you want the full, yil'an al-dunya, the full general one, yil'an al-dunya. If you want just simply, you, you quickly want to curse somebody, yil'an, <laughs> yil'an. If you want to curse somebody who's in front of you, you say yil'anak damn you or curse be on you or shit you shit <laughs> yil'anak if you're a female yil'anik and if, if you're many people yil'anko so these are the top 20 arabic words you maybe more than 20 arabic uh, words and phrases used by palestinians i hope you like them i hope now you understand if you hear these words here and there from your trip or from your palestinian friends or from music uh, videos or whatever you know the meaning and if you end up going to an Arab country or to Palestine, use them or try to understand them when you hear them. All right, I hope you like these lessons and don't forget I have a Palestinian dialect course. All the information are in the description below. Thank you, shukran for watching and I hope that this course was okay for you. I'll see you in the following Arabic Palestinian dialect. Lesson with me, maha, kiss you and ma'asalami. Yalla bye.